Hi everybody, this is Pam with Jesus Junk Journals. And so today we're going to continue on trying to wrestle this giant to the ground. <laughs> I'm going to uh, begin to put the uh, signatures together and uh, finish this thing up. It might take another couple of sessions, but anyway, onward and upward. <laughs> Thanks. I worked on my cover a little bit more. And then I cut my cardboard out, which I didn't think you would want to watch because you know, that's pretty boring. But I cut this. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. This is the biggest journal I've made so far, I think. So this is four and a quarter inches on the spine. And I made the pages just a little under seven inches. I cut them down just slightly because... You know, I had this great idea to use this doily. <laughs> I use the word great with some humor. Um, and I, my intention was I put this liner under it of white cloth and then the doily. And I thought, oh, I'll figure it out at the end. <laughs> well, now I'm at the end. <laughs> I'm like, oh, let's see, what do I do? And so I, I had stitched this clear to the end in places and so I just cut it loose here 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 took the edges folded them in and I I just kind of uh, basted them down just to kind of put them in place just to give some sort of form and make sure this thing was going to fit and I had to do it a couple times to be honest because uh it wasn't wide enough for all the cardboard. So I cut the cardboard down just slightly. And then I expanded the cloth out a little bit. And so here's where I'm at. And so now I'm going to, well, I'm gonna cut a piece of foam. Hang on just a second, I'll get it and show it to you. I've got this foam that I got in some packing and uh, I used it on my last one, just to add a little bit of cushion to the cover. So I think on this one, I'm gonna cut two layers, and I hope I'm not sorry for that, but I'm gonna cut two pieces of this to make it a little softer, and that will go behind the cardboard. So one big rectangle, two big rectangles, then the cardboard, and then I will take and glue that cardboard to it and then I'll take another inside piece of cloth or paper I haven't decided which and do the inside liners of the cover and then it will be ready to glue in the spine okay so I cut the foam and I ended up cutting one big long piece and then I cut two small pieces I didn't think I needed all that padding on the spine so I'm just going to do these two side pieces and I Cut them just so there's enough cloth edge to show that I can, actually I think I need to trim this down. As you can see, I didn't use a ruler. Um, so that I have something that I can stitch to or glue to. And this is not going to be, <laughs> perfectly straight and accurate. So once again, I'm glad this is a junk journal. Uh, the outside I think will be more forgiving because of the doily. So it'll kind of disguise any wonkiness in the measurements. And Okay, so I have, what I'm doing, I'm just to make sure I have cloth around the edge that I can attach to. I'm really just gonna put some, it's gonna hold, hold it in place. Take the E6000. I'm ready to glue cardboard. I think I may need to use E6000 on this too. Because I'm not sure that, Fabri-Tac will glue cardboard to this really slick foam. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go ahead and put just a little bit of that on. 
so I'm going to set those aside and let them dry. And then I'm going to work on binding the signatures. So I have to say this is my least favorite part of making a journal, but it's okay. It's not horrible. It's just, you know, when I when I think about it, I'm I'm not looking forward to it, but in the actual doing of it, it's just, you know, you do what you have to do and get it done and it's not that bad. <laughs> so, I'm taking the liner cardboard from I order that Canon photo uh, paper online and it comes with two sheets of this really thin cardboard so I'm going to use it up so I'm cutting two pieces uh, the size of the spine gluing them together I'm going to take a sanding block and sand one side of it is is shiny it has a coating on it and so I'm going to glue them uncoated side together but when I glue it into the uh, journal I don't want it to not stick well so I'm gonna just run the sanding block over it <laughs> as soon as I figure out what I did with the sanding block I just had it and put it someplace wonderful however I do have an emery board that I use I'll use that use my just plain old Elmer's glue, white glue, to glue this together. Well, as I was getting ready to do this, I realized I was getting the cart before the horse. I haven't done any of the tabs as far as labels. And these are printouts from the kit. And I was trying to figure out how to go about this and which ones I wanted to use. I know I want to use daily prayers, and I'm going to put that in the front. So I, I've got some trims that are wide, and I think what I'm going to do is I've got some bias tape that I got in a box from a flea market. So I think I'm going to take them and glue these headings to them, and then glue those, glue the label to it, probably closer to the edge and then glue the edge of it to the page and let that be my tab for that. So I have been, this is the first week of January and I've been just contemplating what the next thing should be that I work on. I have a joy journal coming <laughs> that I started last year and uh, I just don't quite feel like it's time to put it out there yet. But um, I'm just thinking about several things. I'm thinking about different formats. I have a lot of Kleenex boxes. And uh, friends in my family, we use a lot of Kleenex. I have probably, <laughs> probably over 20 boxes of Kleenexes in my house opened up. I get a lot of empty Kleenex boxes and I've been saving them. And so I was just thinking it might be fun to do some little different project using Kleenex boxes. Okay, and I want weekly prayers. So I'm going to cut that out. The other thing I've been thinking about is to do a journal about your life. And that you could leave <clears throat> for your kids because I was talking to my sister she asked me a question about my grandma, something if she, if I happened to know about, and I didn't. And we were just thinking about how, you know, there's a lot of things we don't know that we should have asked about. And I've run into that before with my mother. Um, she died when I was 40 or 39. And <clears throat> she did not talk a lot about her childhood. And I didn't ask questions. A lot of kids don't ask questions. They're pretty self-absorbed. I know I was. So there's just a lot of things I wished that I would have asked her. And there aren't really any family members to ask. And so I was thinking it might be fun to do a journal where you just kind of sort of a this is your life kind of a journal where you just maybe document some things. Maybe it has a timeline. 
I have I have a timeline that I keep just so I keep straight uh, you know like who got married when and who passed away when and those sorts of things and because those things get a little fuzzy as you go go on so that might be something that we could put in it and then you could just put little little stories because I've I've written out a few stories for my granddaughter because I know someday she might be interested so I'm just I'm just kind of thinking about that. So if you want to leave comments below this video and let me know your thoughts on that, if that's something you might be interested in as a keepsake for your kids or your grandkids, you know, it doesn't have to be every single thing in your life, but it might be five or six stories here about this, five or six stories about this, you know, just write out several paragraphs and put in there just to, just to let them know. And as you think about stories in your life, in your past of things that happened, you know, write them down and keep them handy because I think we may do something with that. Okay, so I was going to turn the camera back on for a second. Um, I cut these apart. And so the way I'm going to arrange mine is I'm going to have daily prayers, weekly prayers, tabs. And then I'm going to do behind weekly the days of the week on a piece of ribbon. Well, I'll just pick this up Tuesday. So I will make my tab for Tuesday and put it along the side of the page. And then on that, I'm going to break up some of these titles. Now I didn't use all of them because I don't need them. Like my mom and dad are in heaven, so I don't pray for them anymore. And things like that, like managers, I was like, oh, thank the Lord I don't have managers anymore. I am retired, so, but I put them in there for you so you could do them, and there's like patients and students for people who have those kind of jobs, but I'm going to use missions, pastor, healing, government, husband, neighbors, finances, extended family, old friends, distant family, close friends. I'm going to break these up and make sure I pray for them at least once a week. I put enemies, <laughs> so like on Friday, maybe I decide I'm going to pray for my enemies. Now, I'm not going to list out my enemies probably, but what I'll do is put the word enemies and whatever that brings to mind on Friday, whoever comes to mind, I will pray for them. There will be a lot of empty pages to write on as you go, as you go on through the journal to journal about your prayers and things. So anyway, that's what I'm thinking right now. So I'm going to work on that and I will be back. Okay, I thought I'd come back on and show you what I did. So I put these tabs in. And so I've got daily prayers, weekly prayers, and then I've got the days of the week. And it went on into my next signature, Saturday. And then on each one, I've got, I glued my little headings, husband, grandchildren, and then uh, immediate needs. So, so if I'm praying daily and I open this up, of course I'm going to pray for them. And then <clears throat> whatever comes to mind, like whatever's going on on that day. And I've got today's focus, which is probably the same thing, but I put them both here just as kind of idea starters. That's really what these headings are. And then weekly prayers. I left a whole page just with that for notes. Sunday, I put pastor, close friends, missions. So whatever comes to mind when I think of close friends, that's what I'll pray. That's just to remind you to pray for anybody that comes into that category. So then Tuesday, I put extended family. So anybody outside of my household is what I'm thinking. And my husband has... Let's see, there's nine boy, no, nine girls and six boys and his family. So there's a lot of extended family to pray for and all kinds of nieces and nephews and so on and so on and so on. Not to mention then my extended family. So that's pretty large category. So they get that whole day all to themselves. <laughs> and then distant family. So whoever comes to mind when you think of distant family. Finances, I left that page. Uh, Thursday, I put neighbors. Uh, 
let's see, Friday I put healing, whatever comes to mind. If there's somebody you know that needs healing for something, that's that will jog your mind to do that. Classmates, I don't know if this applies to everybody, but I still am in contact with a lot of people I went to grade school with even. So when I think of classmates, I want to pray for certain people that I went to school with. And then old friends, so from where I used to work, different people that might come to mind. And then on Saturday, I put unsaved. So whoever comes to mind when you think of unsaved people. Enemies, whoever comes to mind when you think of enemy. Acquaintances. And what I was thinking of acquaintances is like, even if you haven't met them, like, Sometimes God will just um, bring somebody to your attention that you don't even know them that well, or you may not even know them at all. I know sometimes, sometimes I'll get in traffic <laughs> and somebody will be doing something in front of me that's really annoying and I'll just be so, get myself so mad. And then I try to remember like, okay, devil, you don't get to win. I'm going to pray for this person now because my attention has been drawn to them for some purpose. So I'm going to pray for them to be saved or whatever. Blessings on their life. And so I feel like it teaches myself a lesson and kind of punches the devil in the nose. So, you know, maybe that's an acquaintance, although you haven't met him. But anyway. <laughs> so. And then there's a lot more at blanks in my journal. And then I have a separate signature that I'm going to try and tie into the journal with a ribbon. I know that it's kind of popular to use elastic, but so I don't know. I just thought I would try ribbon. So I'm going to put a piece of ribbon and then tie this uh, signature in so that it's removable. But I put my uh, label that says answers here. So I thought I could write when prayers are answered um, and then remove it and replace it with some other uh, more pages. That is what I have. And of course, I have two more signatures with pages to write in. And I also realized this, I don't know how practical this is as a prayer journal, but I wanted to make a journal using all the pieces and parts and just see how big it would get. And of course, I made it bigger because I put the journaling pages in, but it's huge. So I may come back in a little while and make a smaller one that's more practical. But for now, this will be the gigantic one that has everything in it. <laughs> so now, okay, now finally, I am going to go ahead and uh, start to stitch these signatures into a piece of cardboard. And you've seen me do it before. If you haven't, I have several videos of me doing that step by step. So what I'm going to do... I'm not going to do that again. I'm going to uh, skip. I'll do it. I'll come back to you and show you the different steps I do. But here's the piece of cardboard that's glued together. And so, you know, I've got four signatures and then five counting the one that's removable, which will be at the back. And I'm going to put it kind of over close to the edge. And the other four... I, I, I want to put this one fairly close to, to the side, too, because it's got that extra little uh, gutter space. And so there's always a little extra. All right, and I'll be back. Okay, as promised, I'm turning the camera back on. So here's where I'm at. I punched the holes with my awl. Uh here, here, and here. And then I took my first signature. I got the pages all spread out the way I wanted them. And press, and then um, punched the holes to line up with this. And cut about two and a half, the length of your journal, uh, two and a half of those for your length of your wax linen cord. And so you do the figure eight. I went, actually I started in the middle. You can go from this side or this side. Went down, 
went through the cardboard, came out, came back up the cardboard, through the middle of the journal, here, back to the middle, hold the cord back so you don't stab it with the needle or you'll have a problem. Went back this way, came up here, went through here, out here, and then tied a knot. So it is a figure eight that you're doing. And here it is as it sits with the piece of cardboard. And then I took my ribbon that I'm gonna to try to do for the removable journal signature and put it here and I used some Fabri-Tac to glue it. So we'll, we'll see how that works. Now I was, back in the day, like, like the last journal I did, I would stitch a signature and it really does, I will say this, somebody asked me why I did that, I'll say this, it makes it a lot easier to handle it. And, you know, if you wanna add last minute things, it's a lot easier to do it with a signature than it is trying to pick up a whole journal. So this was my first time to try just go, not doing that and just stitching loose pages to the cardboard. So hoping that I don't regret that. <laughs> so I am eyeballing just kind of by flipping back and forth where the center is. And I'm stabbing it into this piece of foam right here. So I'm gonna put the needle down through the middle hole, through the middle of the middle hole of the next line for this next signature. Bring it back through this hole. Back through this hole. And then this is where it gets a little bit tricky. You wanna be sure you don't stab this wax thread on the second pass through that mill hole. Through there. And I'm gonna pull it out instead of trying to put it through the cardboard hole because I wanna make sure it doesn't stab it there either. So I'm point putting it back through there making the figure eight, and then back through this hole. And through this hole. and then pull all of them really tight. So there's no slack. Take the needle off. And tie it in a double knot. Close to the Pull it this way so it's close to that center hole. And you can cut it off and then you can either add a charm to it or leave it by it's just plain. I'm just gonna tie a bow for now. I might come back later and add charms after the fact. Okay, so there's two down, three to go. So I'm gonna do the other two and then I'll come back and show you at the end. All right, so here we go. This is where it is so far. I've got all four signatures in 
and I'm getting ready to try to tie this last one in. It's the removable one. And <clears throat> I went ahead and bound it like with like a regular signature with, with uh, wax thread. And I punched holes in it where these ribbons are. And I'm going to use this needle to help get the get the ribbon where it needs to go. I don't know if this will work or not, but we'll find out. So there's that ribbon. Put this in here. <laughs> getting this tight <clears throat> getting this tight is the tricky thing sorry if you can't see me I've got to, I'm just gonna have to do this okay let's see okay let's see how steady that is it's a little wobbly but not too bad I think once it's in the cover It'll be all right. Okay, so there's, there is the <laughs> bound signature, or the bound signature. So now all I need to do is put the glue in it and glue it into the cover. So let me go get that. Yeah, I'm not quite ready for that yet. I need to cover this. I need to figure this piece of the puzzle out. I haven't, I haven't yet, to be quite honest. I haven't figured out what I want to be the liner pages, but I'll put it in here just so you can see. So I'll glue that, glue it to here, and then it will shut like this. <laughs> and oh I'm glad I didn't glue it in hang on this is upside down <laughs> that would have been terrible because that is not the cover that's the back cover there so here's the here's the cover prayer war room journal what it looks like so far I've got a package in the mail. Imagine that. I ordered some more of Tim Holtz's fabric. He, he has a new bunch out called Abandoned. There's Abandoned. I just got a half a yard. And this one looks like it would go really well with this journal, the colors in it. So I'm thinking I'm going to use a piece of that for the inside liner. But I wanted to show you these other pieces in case uh, you hadn't seen them. I mean, they're pretty. Um, it's funny though, the ones I, you know, I couldn't see them very well online. So I just went ahead because I knew they'd be pretty. I did the best I could, but it's funny because the ones, I, I think I already showed you this one and this one. The ones I liked the most were the ones that I, didn't care about online. This one is my favorite, I think. And it didn't look like anything online. But isn't that pretty? It's like it's had water water stains on it. And then it's got like checks. It says something Valley National Bank. So it's like checks in the background. But the colors are gorgeous. And that, that uh, water stain on there. It's just so pretty. And then this one, which I didn't almost didn't order, is gorgeous. It's black crackle. And it just looks wonderful in, in real life. 
And then this one I thought that I liked is a little bright. I don't know. It's a little boho, but that's fine because we're going to do a boho one here before long. But I got a whole yard of it. Pretty, pretty colors. So those are the new ones. And the one that I think goes the best with this journal is the one I showed you. So I'm going to use that for the inside, which is this. Okay, so just wanted to come back and show you that, and then I will come back after I've worked on it a little bit. Okie doke, here I am back. It has been a while, I will tell you. Uh, I went down, had dinner, <laughs> came back, worked some more. I don't know why, I, I just had, I don't know, I had a little bit of trouble getting this stitched on, but I kind of whip stitched, I did it all by hand around the edges to uh, stitch this on here. And just like the last one I did, when I got done, it was kind of uh, slack, like there was space in it. So I took some more of that foam, and I did this on that last journal too, if you watched me. And this side, I think both sides, no, this one I just had to put one piece in. This side I put two pieces in, which I like because it just makes it thicker and feels squishier. So anyway, here's what it looks like. And now it's ready to glue this into, and then I need to figure out the closure, which I think I may just wrap some sorry silk around it. So I need to cut back some of this fabric and glue it. I wonder if I can just slide that back. I hate to cut it because I, I have a habit of cutting too much and then I've got this weird space to fill. But if I just carefully tuck that in, I wonder if I can fold the fabric over it. And then somehow or other, oh, that's already bending. Oh, well. All right, so do I dare go ahead and glue it in? I guess I can. I can fiddle with that, finishing the sides later. All right, here we go. Okay, so I'll put some sorry silk on it, finish up a few details, and then I will do a flip through. Oh my goodness. That is one fat journal. <laughs> Thanks for watching, you guys. See you next time.